What test do courts use to scrutinize rights that are protected by the United States Constitution? The rights protected by the Constitution aren't absolute. The courts apply balancing tests to measure the importance of the rights protected and the needs of the government. First, fundamental rights, the essential privileges recognized by the Supreme Court, require a high degree of protection from government encroachment. These rights are specifically identified in the Constitution, particularly the Bill of Rights, or have been implied through interpretation of clauses such as under due process. Here are some examples of fundamental rights mentioned directly in the Constitution. Here are fundamental rights not specifically listed in the Constitution, but given the same high degree of protection nonetheless. Under this strict scrutiny standard, the government must show that the law is narrowly tailored to serve a compelling state interest. An example of a famous law that passed strict scrutiny is a case that involved a law that made it illegal to burn draft cards as a form of protest against the Vietnam War. The Supreme Court ruled that the law was constitutional because it served a legitimate government purpose during wartime. When a right protected by the Constitution isn't considered a fundamental right, the courts typically apply a different standard known as the rational basis test. This test is used to determine the constitutionality of a statute where the statute is presumed constitutional and the burden is on the one attacking the legislation to prove otherwise. Under the rational basis test, the courts will uphold a law if it's reasonably related to a legitimate government interest. This is an easy standard and the government has wide leeway. A famous example of a law failing the rational basis test is a Texas municipality zoning law that had been used to impede the creation of a group home for persons suffering from mental illness. Another is a law that denied food stamps to households where unrelated people were living together, for example, hippie communes. The court found that the law was not rationally related to a legitimate government interest and therefore failed the rational basis test. There's a mid-level of scrutiny, less demanding than strict scrutiny, but more rigorous than the rational basis test. Under intermediate scrutiny, a law will be deemed constitutional if it serves an important government objective and is substantially related to achieving that objective. Examples where the Supreme Court used intermediate scrutiny are gender, illegitimacy, content-based restrictions on speech, alienage, age, and disability. An example of a law that passed this test involved an Oklahoma law that prohibited the sale of beer to minors. The U.S. Supreme Court upheld the law, ruling that it served an important government interest in maintaining traffic safety. One that failed, the Virginia Military Institute's all-male school was struck down for not being gender inclusive. The U.S. Supreme Court ruled that it failed to show an exceedingly persuasive justification for the gender-based distinction. So why is it important to know these rights and the tests applied? Because with knowledge comes the responsibility to exercise our rights properly. We can use this knowledge to challenge unjust laws when government overreach happens and behave like law-abiding citizens when the government passes necessary laws for the benefit of society. In summary, knowing our rights helps us understand our responsibilities.